Hey YouTube family, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. In today's video, I am bringing you one of my thrift store trash to treasure makeovers. On my channel, I do lots of thrift flips, trash to treasure, furniture flips, and I share with you the process of how I get these items ready to resell, and I sell here locally in an antique mall. In today's video, I am sharing you the process that I got four thrifted wall decor items ready to resell. So here's my trash to treasure thrift store flips. These are a couple mirrored windows I absolutely love and especially since they were a pair. Now they were $5.09 a piece but I definitely know with painting them white that I can make a profit. Now I showed this mirror in my thrift haul. I absolutely love it but what you may not have noticed is a lot of the beads had a lot of wear on it. So we'll see how I can give this piece justice. And for 409, I thought it was well worth my time. I'm hoping to fix this problem on the back of it. I was very happy to run across this frame, though it's resin. I was glad that it was a picture frame. I never want to ruin, I don't know about artwork, so I'm happy when I find frames like this. And this is a big guy. And I definitely loved that 409 price tag. And now you can see all the detailing on this frame. And I absolutely loved this frame ceiling tile. Oh, yes, please. So the 809 price tag on this very large piece, I was not worried about the resale cost of selling this, especially since I knew I was going to give it the ginger chick style. And my excitement when I found out that was just a magnet on the front of that. So I'm going to go right into working on the six panel mirror windows. And I was happy when I flipped this piece over that I could remove the mirror portion out of it. This just makes it much easier to paint. And if you're new to my channel or you are one of my re regular subscribers or <laughs> You know that I definitely do not like this two hanger system. That's just too hard to figure out on a wall. And so we always replace the hanging systems on the back of these pieces anyway. So I'm going to be removing these. Definitely always makes me feel better because look how dirty that mirror is. Yuck. So on this picture frame, I'm going to be removing this wire. I like the hardware on this because we can replace the with a stronger wire. This wire was not very thick and actually it kind of gave me some slivers. I'm glad that I'm taking it off. Now I'm going in and going to be lifting up these little metal tabs so I can remove this piece of cardboard and the matting from the, this picture frame. Then lifting those little metal tabs up, I can go back in now and pull them out. We're, I'm, we're going to be replacing this with pallet wood and they will be in the way. But I have to be very careful because this, like I said, this is resin. And like I said, I needed to be careful, but I did end up snapping a piece of this frame off. But I know I can fix it. Just one more extra step, but it happens. As you see, I, that crack right there, now the piece is loose. So this was a Hobby Lobby frame, and whoo, what a price tag. I know it's a big frame, but it's resin. Even though it began its life at Hobby Lobby, I am sanding that off, and I'm going to be ginger chick now. So I cannot recommend the Starbond CA glue enough. That's why I had no worries when I broke this piece off that I know that I can use a little bit of this glue and spray the activator and then in 15 seconds it is dry and it is a permanent bond. I just love this stuff. And then I can get on to my working day. I don't have to clamp it. I don't have to tape it waiting for the glue to dry. Yeah, I did go from behind it and put a little bit of the glue on also just to make sure that it was good and adhered. And I'm also going to go back in with the Starbond glue on the back of this mirror and glue that all these loose little parts down.
And I try to always remember to throw this tip in, just kind of put your tip in some Vaseline so that lid does not glue on. I do have a little bit of filling that I need to do. I don't really know on the bottom of these why you see screws. I just, I guess it's just the way that they put it together and they didn't cover it up. So I'm going to be filling those in with a little bit of the Durham water putty as a filler. I don't want you to see those screws and I don't want to paint over it and make it look like a hole. I absolutely love this Durham water putty. Just a little bit of water, a little bit of the powder. Mix it to the consistency you want, just like a wood filler, a spackle. Let it dry and then you can sand it. I did use the water putty on the back of this mirror also because I think my back sides of my projects, my items, are just as important as the front side and even though I glued those pieces down it left holes so I wanted to fill those in so now I'm just going through and using my orbital sander to sand them smooth and then I'll just go over to these window frames the nice thing about this Durham water putty is like it says it dries rock hard but it is very easily easily sandable So now I'm on to cleaning my products before I get them started to paint. You always want to clean your items, get any grime, any grease, anything off that might prevent your paint from sticking. And I absolutely love the crud cutters. There are a few different kinds of these and I find that they all just work beautifully the same. Just depending on the product, you can item, you can spray it on, wipe it off. You can put it on the rag and wipe it off, but there's no rinsing needed. Just make sure that you let your product completely dry before proceeding to paint. Even though this mirror is wood, I am still going to use my Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in flat black. Just, I don't want to gum up or fill in the holes of all that beadwork. The spray paint will leave this nice and smooth so you can still see those individual beads. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you like these type of treasure, trash to treasure, thrift store flips. I love sharing my ideas with you, but to let YouTube know that you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. I have to tell you guys, this piece was just a great find. In my little farming community town, we don't have a lot of salvaged architectural pieces. So these reproductions, when I can make them look a little bit more farmhousey, people just absolutely love these pieces. And for longevity, this Rust-Oleum paint and primer on this metal just does that. It just adheres very well to this piece. And then even though I did not take footage of me spraying that resin frame, this is the same product I used on that also. So for these two window panes, I'm using this ready to use black onyx and flat. Now I'm going to be painting both sides of these with the black onyx and I'm going to really try not to get too much build up or too much drips. I want to see a clean line on the back of this, especially where the slatted pieces, I'm not really sure what that's called, just so that'll be against the mirror and I want to see that black. For me, the little brush and painting on this piece just is easier for me to control how much paint is going on because I'm going to have to replace that mirror and if I get too much buildup, it won't fit properly. Now I did two coats of the black Rust-Oleum on these pieces. And so what I'm doing now is I'm moving on to some polycrylic. And what that's doing, it is, I know it's considered a top coat. For, for me, it's kind of an in pretrine coat. It is going to seal that Rust-Oleum spray paint in there. So when I go to distress it, that black is going to stay on this piece. That way I don't see that burgundy. That's why I didn't bother 
trying to sand that burgundy off, I knew I could seal this black in using this polycrylic. Now that I have two coats of black on the back side of these panes, I am flipping them over and painting the front side black also. When I go to distress these pieces, I want to be able to see some of that black. The nice thing about having a husband be my teammate is that he's the one that cuts the pallet wood down for these pieces. And so we're not going to be able to staple these in because that resin would probably just crack and we just have a hot mess. So what he's doing is he's cut the slats of the pallet wood down to fit into this frame properly. And now he's just using the tight bond glue to make it so that it's going to be a permanent adhesion to this frame. And only did he lay a bead of the glue around the frame, he's also hitting the edges of these pieces of pallet wood. Remember, this is, the glue is the only thing that's going to be holding this pallet wood in. So now to act as a weight, he's just putting these pieces of pallet wood. They're not going to be staying there. And then he's just finding objects to help push this down and then letting it sit overnight and let the glue what it glue does and glue it together. Now I don't feel as if there's any need to paint the back of this piece white. I want the front white, but I want a clean line. So I am just taking the time to use some masking tape to tape off the back side of these. And I, I am going to be doing these little slats also because I don't, I want to see that clean line because that's the part that's going to be against the mirror. And I just buy the masking tape at the dollar store. So very cost efficient for me to use tape like this. And see, as you can see that masking tape, that way I'm not going to have to worry about it Ro rolling under and I'm, that black is going to be what you see against the mirror just kind of like a shadow and so now I'm just on to my kills paint and primer I, like I said I just buy paint from Walmart I have good luck with it adhering and staying on these pieces so it is like 20 bucks a gallon in my area I absolutely love using this paint and with it being a flat white I just absolutely love how these pieces turn out using these paints And then I did switch over to my smaller brush that way I can control that I'm not getting too much paint trying to paint these little slats with the bigger brush. Yes, it is time consuming, but sometimes it's just worth your time. And then I'm on to my second coat. I can tell you there's something about when I undercoat in that black onyx, the way that the white paint takes to this black onyx, I feel the white paint takes better to the black than it does to that natural wood, even with that primer in it. So this is what works for me, and I probably won't change because I absolutely love it, and my buyers love it too. For this resin frame, I did spray paint the back of that black too and seal that in with that polycrylic. And the same thing, the same concept. I like my back of my pieces to be just as pretty as the front of my pieces. So I'm taping off that edge so that I don't get a mess underneath there. And I don't want to cover, like completely paint my palette wood. I do a dry brushing on that. So I tape off the inside of this palette wood and now I'm just using that same kills paint and primer for the white on these 
pieces. And for me, when I'm trying to fill in with paint on this detail work, I do try to fill in as much as I can with the first coat because it does kind of build up a little bit and it takes a little bit longer to dry. So I knew when I was spray painting this piece that I was missing the edge, but I did not want to spray paint the back of this piece because I absolutely love that galvanized tin on the back, even though that's not the part you show. Remember, I like my backs just to be as pretty as my fronts. So to make a nice crisp line, I'm just finishing the back of this off since that's just the frame with this black onyx. So if you may have noticed in this video, I'm letting you see a lot of me painting and not fast forwarding. Another one of my viewer subscribers comments was that people enjoy watching other people paint, that they find it very relaxing. I know this may seem like a silly step, but I didn't want to wait for paint to dry on the back. I guess I could have painted it white, but I just rather Dollar Tree masking tape, tape that back side off so I can have that crisp line so it doesn't run underneath. And I use the Kills paint and primer on this piece also to make it white. So as you see on this round mirror, I taped off the mirror part as best as I could. I spray painted that beadwork on the front, also using that Rust-Oleum, and I really loved it in brown. So here I'm using some truffle of the chalk paint, and I'm trying to make this look a little bit similar to what the, the mirror beads were, but they were war, so I wanted to freshen it up. That's just part of me reselling I like to give you what I consider to be a brand new piece so I'm just using one of these chalk brushes and that truffle trying to just do a dry brushing I want to see some of that back I want to see all these colors so I absolutely hope that this turns out <laughs> Now what I'm using is the Waverly Antiquing Wax. I'm giving those two different colors of brown on top of this black to kind of give that very nice wooden detail look. I know that it's going to look painted. That is perfectly fine. I just wanted to see some depth and colors. I wasn't going to try to sand little bitty beads. There's no way I would be able to get it even. But I, the same with the Waverly Wax. I'm just doing that dry brushing. I'm just blending all these three colors in together. Now I have to say I am actually very happy with how this is turning out. I'm not sure what your opinion is, but I'm absolutely loving it. Well, I want to seal this, all these paints in, including the wax. And so I'm using the polycrylic to seal all this in. So this item will have more of a longevity it did from when it was bought in a store. I do find taking and painting that black underneath, I don't have to do as many coats of white. So now that I've done two coats of white on this and then looked for a third to see if there was any places that needed touch up, I'm on to distressing this piece and I'm just using some 220 sandpaper and I'm hitting any of the raised edges, any of the corners. I just want to take it down to that black. And if I push even harder on my sandpaper, I can get it go to go down into the wood so it's just what your preference is and then I'll take it on the flat edges of the piece very gingerly very lightly and just sand out so the piece is nice and smooth and you don't feel any brush strokes 
and then I'll flip the piece over and remove the masking tape that I had put on as a protective barrier and then I'll sand off that hard crusty edge that is left from the paint building up against the tape. And including these slatted areas where I'm going to have to replace this mirror. I want that to be nice and clean on that slatting because like I said that's going to look like a shadow on that mirror. So you don't want to be able to see any white that might have went under a little bit. So now I want to show off all this beautiful detail on this resin frame. So when it comes to sanding resin, remember that it doesn't soak in like it soaks into wood. The paint doesn't. So I'm just gingerly taking my 220 sandpaper and then just running it over the bumped out pieces, the, those sharp edged lines. I just want to see the beautiful detail of this piece and the distressing is going to match this palette wood beautifully. And then the same thing, I'm going to flip the piece over, remove that masking tape, sand off that crusty hard where that paint had built up. And if you notice that I left those corner protectors on the piece of, on the back side of this, I did not want to hurt this frame by trying to remove those staples. So I just spray painted them over. So now I'm going to go in and remove that tape that I put on the inside of this frame to protect that pallet wood. That way now I can go in and dry brush this palette wood. So when Chris is doing the palette pieces for me, I do not have him sand it down. So what I'm doing with my paintbrush and some of that same Kills paint is I'm just doing a dry brush where there's a little bit of paint on. And since he didn't sand down that palette wood, it's not nice and smooth. And so what my brush is doing is it's grabbing all that uneven, all that rough texture of this palette wood and it just blends it just takes that harsh of it looking like it's just a piece of palette and just makes it a little bit more pretty just by toning it down and blending all the uneven colors and on all the unevenness of that palette wood. So now I'm just going back in with a sander on and I'm just I just grabbed my multi-use tool and put the sanding head on it so I can get into the corners of these pieces. So this just now I can take the roughness down and then if I got too much paint on places also, that'll take a little bit of more of the paint off. But I just love the way that dry brushing and then sanding afterwards just blends the outer frame in with the palette wood. Now I am so excited to get to sand this piece, this tile, metal tile framed. Oh, what a beautiful piece. So I'm just going with my 220 sandpaper and the same thing. I sealed that black paint in, so I'm not going to press it really hard because I don't really want to see that burgundy that's hidden underneath there. So I'm just going lightly and letting that black show through so we can see all the beautiful details of this piece, especially when it comes to sanding on this metal. It's better to do very light touches and go over a lot of time until you show the black than trying to push hard when I don't want to see that burgundy. Yep, I'm sorry to be repetitive, but this is the OCD in me. So I took off the tape and I'm sharp, sanding down this sharp edge of paint buildup. For me as a reseller, I was glad that I could remove these mirrors. And then I'm, just, I'm a fan of Norwex cleaning cloths. I love the Enviro cloth and I love that glass cloth for cleaning. No chemicals needed. I cannot say enough about these cloths and how well they clean glass and mirror. And it was well worth my time to tape off this mirror. I know some people just paint over it because paint does come off glass. You can scrape, but I'm always afraid I'm going to scrape the mirror. So I just rather tape off. It's just what you prefer to do and what works for you. So that's what I'm doing. I just taken some of the brown paper that we cover our tables with and cut little pieces of that off to help so I didn't have to use as much of the masking tape even though it came from the Dollar Tree and then just the same thing using the Norwex cleaning cloth to clean off the mirror.
So now that I have all my pieces sanded, I'm going to be using the assistance of the air compressor to get rid of all of this sanding dust. And if you don't have an air compressor, a blow dryer works too. Just that sanding dust gets in all those little crevices and it's nice to use something with forced air to get it out. And then to finish my white pieces up, I'm going in with some Varathane finishing wax. I do not know why that I can only find this at my local Home Depot, but I absolutely love this. White paint is a primer, and I know it's on there to stay, but I just like one extra protection. And I love the way that this smells, and I love the way that it makes these wooden pieces, these even the metal pieces, all our pieces feel just so silky smooth. So yep, I do the exact same process to the pallet wood frame also using the air compressor, blow all that sanding dust off and then using the Varathane wax just to seal and protect one extra step to protect that paint. Now that I have my mirrors all cleaned and the frame all waxed and now that it's dry, I can flip these over and replace the mirror and that backing piece of board back onto these beautiful cute little six paned window mirrors and then just replace the little tabbies and they are good to go and remember i said we replace all that hardware back on to our pieces so when you buy one of my pieces one i can hang it in my booth and i have something to hang it by but that is ready to take home and ready for you to hang in your own home so chris is we just have a little bit stronger wire and that we like to make sure that it's good and secure, especially that pallet wood when you're putting this many pieces on, it gets quite heavy. So here's what my trash to treasure, my thrifted pieces look like before they got the ginger chick flip. And this is why I love distressing a piece. I just love to bring out all those little hidden details that you just don't see when it's all one color of paint. I just absolutely love, I love taking the time to paint those slats with, slats with a little bitty brush so that it didn't build up. And they're just now perfect for the farmhouse decor. So I should have gotten closer on this mirror so you could have seen the wear on the beads, but I had a lot of reviews about not painting it, so I was a little bit leery there about painting this piece. But I have to say I absolutely love how it came out. I loved doing the black with the Waverly truffle, with the Waverly wax, and then sealing it in with that polycrylic. So now I know that it is going to last that paint is going to last for somebody and what a beautiful accent mirror and i was so happy i can't even tell you how happy i was to run across this frame that was not artwork i will not ruin somebody's artwork i don't know anything about artwork but framed and palette wood sells really well for us so i was happy to run across this piece i first started selling pieces like this I used to try to come up with some type of wreath to put on it, but unfortunately that increased the price by a lot. And so then when, one day I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna take the wreath off and see how it sells. And they sold really well, and so that's how I've been selling these now. And when I thrifted this piece, I really thought that was a wood piece that was glued on to the middle. I was so super excited and happy that that was just a magnetic piece but i absolutely love like i said these ceiling tiles i've never run across a one that was as big as this and i just absolutely love it and i know that it will sell very easily in my booth So I thank you so much for watching today's video and don't forget to give me a quick comment of which one was your favorite and if I have inspired you in any way to look at thrifted items or just items that are laying around your house in a different way.
And if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. You've helped my channel grow just by you giving me a quick, kind compliment, comment, and a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they keep recommending me. If you're new to my channel, just hit that subscription button along with the notification bell if you like this kind of content.